me shush my mouth when we get to listen. <laughs> Small breaks for you to breathe first. Afternoon will be intense. Okay, afternoon and a lot of other balance. I'll introduce Sintra in the middle of the way, but I'll actually give you some beats for you to enjoy the views. And I'll start introducing at some point. Okay, here we go. I haven't counted. Now it's just like. One curiosity, if you look now to your left, you will see actually the hiking trails. You can go from here to Erisera, which is like half an hour by bus. You do it in a few hours to there, but it's beautiful. Some of them, if you go actually down the cliffs, without any type of stairs, no nothing, cliffs, it's a paradise. It's like white sand, crystal clear water, no one's there. It's very, very nice. There's no many, not many events, but it's also very difficult to reach and uh, very difficult to climb up. Once it was funny that I had a, I had one tour there and uh, they changed the route. It was part so they wanted to go down. So I, I asked, and then the driver wanted to come with me. It was funny that well, we all went down. The bus stayed here, but then on the way up, there were a team of climbers. So uh, we did it very fast to get up. We got here, and uh, like, where's the driver? So I was like, okay, so he couldn't climb somewhere. He couldn't climb the first face. He just stayed at the beach. I had to actually pull him up, and uh, otherwise we got without a driver. It was fun. I had another one, like bachelor party. And in my case, I'm not englobing every man, but in general, I know. All my friends have this tendency, we don't plan things well, we're not too functional. So uh, we had a bachelor party starting down there and everyone thought like, okay, so we have to take the drinks down. So we took a lot of drinks down and no one thought that, okay, they have a bottle. So uh, no one thought about carrying it back. So everyone got tipsy down there and then we had to climb back with everything on our backs. It was not too, not too efficient. But my group of friends usually tends to be very unfunctional, so we all get along because of that, I feel like. Here we go. So, uh, from now on, we'll have a different type of, I would say, landscape. And from now on, we'll have that collection that I will actually explain what it is and why it was made. But first of all, I'm actually talking about Sintra itself. So here in Sintra we have two different reasons why the microclimate, but both places are a microclimate. It doesn't feel like Sintra will be foggy. I haven't seen I've seen the mountain. So usually when you actually see the mountain, it means that it's going to be hot, good temperatures. Usually in the morning it's covered by the fog, which along the morning actually gets clear, but it means that it's going to be hot. Today will not be the case. As I've been telling you, the summer is too shy this year, so um, it's good for one reason, but for the others don't. I like my 35, 36 degrees, that's, that's what I like, that's good. I'm on vacation in September, so they're waiting temperatures for that, so I don't mind, it's okay. Um, Sintra, so let's start. Sintra, besides the microclimate, three influences. We will be next to the ocean still, so there is no pressure of humidity. Being two mountains full of nature, we create a humidity by nature. And the village is in the middle, so we kind of create some humidity vapor around. But actually the main reason why we have this microclimate is because of a king. So the king, actually the one, the pioneer, the one who built the Pena Palace, it was the main influence for the weather that we had. Without knowing, he created a new, a very intense microclimate. Why? So we came here to get married with our queen, but uh, he fell in love with this area. He acquired 
over 100 acres of land around where the palace is and he actually was more an artist and a collector than a precise king so he actually he actually made a collection of trees he collected over 600 different species of trees from all around the world we actually tended to do that to show culture to show that we besides we don't have those tropical trees we don't have those tropical animals we actually know how they look alike and we represented them that's why in lisbon mainly we have some animals that look totally different of what they should we have like we'll have examples today still but like there is one elephant that looks like a seal there is two lions that look like monkeys like we the artists haven't traveled so that was the problem you'll have that today as well i'll have the chance to show you so here we go looking forward to see your reactions um sintra besides that collection we call it the capital of romantic so uh, the capital of romantic is not because everyone falls in love in there or because proposes to each other which is all good the proposal i'm seeing couples a few couples here so guys if you actually planning to uh, ask someone propose to someone let me know in advance because I'm sensitive I might cry so no one's what no one want to see me crying so please let me know okay I'll be prepared and I will deal with that in another way okay here we go but all good love is always in the air not in only in Sintra everywhere so please here we go so romantic since it's not because of that reason we have another reason which is a mix of styles we have so many architectures so many influences that we ended up calling romantic but it's kind of a medieval kind of area it's kind of a it looks like a fairy tale kind of village okay and you'll have a plus and that plus is actually created by unesco since UNESCO, Patrimonium of the World, is the one who preserves Sintra. The great majority is preserved by them. But they actually started in 1995 by the Bena Palace. The huge change was that the government felt way too excited with the preservation of the palace. Of course, what a coincidence. So the government felt inspired to commercialize the palace, which they did. But they did a mistake because the palace was initially grey, that was the original color. So they painted of yellow and red, which uh, commercialized, that was actually, it worked very well because we have nowadays, for a few years, 15, between 15 to 26,000 visitors a day. Last year we broke a record, we did, never got that or close to this number that was made the record. It was 44,000 in one day. The reason why we have this alarming situation is because we had the Pope in August. So visiting of the Pope brought a lot of people. That was one day that everyone visited. There was like school trips, the Pope plus August, which is the month that we have more visitors. So that's the reason why, of course, not allowed everyone in. But uh, gardens, we have we have the possibility of the garden, so everyone 44,000, which means lines. I'm not do I don't deal well with lines. I'm saying lines. You'll have lines, but uh, I will manage. Okay, I've done this for a while. So uh, if there is a big line, two hours, it happens. Mondays are busy. So if you have that big of a line, I'll probably will leave you in the line, and I will leave. <laughs> and uh, usually that happens, don't get scared, you know, I'm just warning you uh, because I'm tricky, so I will actually, you'll know already if I'll actually leave you in a line, you just have to wait five minutes if I don't show up, you will leave the line and you will look for me on the line, okay? because I know all the guides and I will look for 
my colleague that is closer to the door with his group and I will stay next to him when you about to arrive I will pretend that you just late I'll pretend like guys where were you so late almost missed it so lucky that you're here and you join me okay that's a way for me to or at least we pretend that we're not skipping the lines and you know already so uh Sintra continuing <laughs> ah careful with the colors okay it's super foggy the color never dries properly the walls the paint is always coming out I ruined a few shirts okay careful even because yellow and red if you try to move the or next to the wall depending on how much actually paints your clothes it's not it's not easy to match yellow and red they choose it's a big problem so careful cheapness out of the palace so they became strict we had to paint every year once that's why it never dries properly it doesn't have enough time without fog to dry it's super humid but also there was implemented one pattern on the historical village that's exactly where we're going now going towards the center that's where you're having a free time but that part pattern of colors was created in the need of having a different type of romance and a different type of village that's a deal in between the town hall and UNESCO you have five colors that became a pattern you have to paint your house if you own property whatever it is you need to paint on one of those five which is light blue yellow red pink and orange those are the five colors you need to actually paint there are two that are neutral which is white and light green there is one that no, not only in Sintra but everywhere around that is some areas that if the house building is isolated with tile we cannot change if it gets damaged rotten destroyed you need to replace it you need to actually go to the factory get the pattern and you have need to replace it as it was Otherwise, they will have some bills for you to pay, some fines, and that happens a lot, okay? The tile is actually a great isolation, but it's historical, so it's taken as a historical kind of thing, so we cannot change it. You'll see that. Um, also, differences in the houses. We'll have several different approaches, which they mix the Neo-Indian, the Neo-Chinese, also the edges of the house will have a lot of details. The balconies will be made out of iron, with a lot of details as well, is worked on the iron and twisted. The metal is incredible, but also little towers. It looks very, very medieval. Okay, we'll have the chance to show you all that. We'll actually be very precise as soon as we get there. But it's very small. Okay, it might be crowded. I will give you enough time. I will can even extend because today it's Monday. I'm, I usually go very slow. I'm not rushing anything so even in the palace I actually got a slot for us not to be stressed even uh, in the palace we walk a little bit so we're going slow okay we have time I'll show you several things around there is a few details that I need time to explain so if you don't mind we'll get 20 minutes after to Lisbon but for you to do it with calmness okay someone has some appointment cancel that's all good if you're still energetic when the when the tour ends um tavern tours the crawls i like those it's monday i always need to refill so ah about food um Sintra, it's good i will give you some places for you to go but that in the general aspects not only central Lisbon, Cascais, those populated areas, Porto, the bigger cities you need to be careful of the restaurants okay sometimes the bill comes and sometimes you don't actually check the bill precisely and you have something that you didn't have that you'll pay for it and you have a lot of touristical traps around so always check it is not legit and they're trying to implement that it's not good I also travel, I like to go to restaurants that are good, typical food from the locals. So uh, if you need some advice to some places, let me know. Because I'm a little frustrated with it nowadays, I'm a fan of Portuguese Tavern, which is that place that doesn't look appealing, 
the best way to know if it is good is not the menu or whatever. If you look inside, it's not too bright and too shiny and it's full of men with mustache. <laughs> that's the one, okay? If they're playing domino or cards, that's a plus. Because it means that they're to stay for a while, so they already got a lot of food, that's good. Because I even feel like doing the pandemic, everything got way too bright, too shiny, and they all call it gourmet now. It's gourmet. You pay 50 euros, they give you a leg of a freeze, eucalyptus, cork. Cork is like a plague, you have it everywhere. Uh, we're the main exporters of cork in the whole world. So you might see a lot without the peel already. So we take we take the peel off, the tree remains healthy because we cut it until a certain point. And then it takes, it's a huge procedure. It takes in between five to seven years to grow back. That's when we peel it off again. So it's a huge procedure. We're actually trying to get a, a different way to do the bottle caps, to the water, wine bottle, bottle caps, yes. So um, the, the, we, did, we did something with oil, but it's not as functional. The cork, we can compress it a lot. It actually covers the, the wine, but even like that, it leaves a little bit of air getting inside, which even alongs the preservation and how long it lasts. So that's good. The oil doesn't do the same, so they're trying to figure it out another way to actually cover because sometimes we don't have enough corn for the demand that we already have. So that's a, a problem that we're facing now. Also, from here on, you'll you'll start to see several golf courts, golf resorts, and you'll see them on the right at some point because we have several resorts around here as well. But from now on, nature, when you're about to get to see you will understand immediately because we'll have some old and medieval construction. So enjoy, then I will come back to introduce you some other things.
some of the places, some of the houses, some of the atmosphere that you'll have around. It's similar to the one we have in the center, but in the center is way more intense. So we're getting there. This is always the line that we have at this time to get in. Uh, that's good that we have this line. As I see.
so we're getting close to the center. We have this uh, usually is like that. It's crowded, and Mondays it's the busiest day in Sintra because usually in Lisbon everything is closed, like uh, churches, monuments. They close on Mondays, so it's a little busier in here, but manageable. What curiosity? This hotel here on the left, one of the main investors is uh, Rafael Nadal, the tennis player. Uh, before we had royalty as the celebrities, now a different type of celebrities. Not only him, we have Michael Fassbender who has property, Chris Pine, we had Madonna who lived in here for three years. That was actually interesting because our news were all about her, so we knew that she wasn't here because of the news. But everything, like... Uh, Madonna stepped on a rock, Madonna <laughs> tried an ice cream, Madonna sneezed, everything was her, so I was very precise that she wasn't here. Now, we're getting to the center, there is one thing, um, I will talk a little bit more than what I've just talked until now, so it will become intense. There is a perfect thing in here, which is also traditional from here, which is uh, called uh, Gijinha, which is a cherry liquor. That is good for patients. So, two after lunch, before lunch, when you prefer. Very nice. Thank you. Very good. This is the perfect timing to have it. Green wine, it's a match, in my opinion, with seafood and fresh fish. Comparing to the white, it's more fruity and sour. I always say that the green wine is like a, if the champagne and the white wine had a baby. It's, I would say, it like that. Uh, we're arriving. One thing I'll do exactly as in Kashkaj. I will settle the meeting point right here in this little square with the fountain on. So that will be the meeting point. I'll tell you the time when I finish talking, otherwise you lose time because I talk too much. So from here we go to the center, but I will settle the meeting point here and I will refresh, I will tell you again. Okay. So everyone's ready? Here we go.